Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. I just wanted to make a pretty quick update video, uh, mainly for 5.3 because I was actually testing it out today and I found that you can actually do it um, without borrowing any of your friend's support units. And I actually recorded a run of me doing it and I just actually just wanted to show it really, really quickly. So basically um, what you'll need for, for 5.3 um, is pretty pretty good timing and kind of understanding of, of the run um, and mechanics in the game. So I wanted to basically make like a commentary because I thought if I just upload this video, um, a lot of people have a lot of questions when they're trying to do this. And I also found that borrowing like an E2 Scotty is actually relatively difficult. Um, you can actually do it with a siege, but I found that actually doing it this way is even easier than um, barring a siege, because you can actually get one of the timings wrong and still be able to to do it. So basically, the the match starts with you putting um, Vigna down facing up, and you want to basically poke this guy five times, and on the fifth poke, he's going to raise his hand to try to attack you, and you want to retreat Vigna before then to get your deployment points back. You don't want her to die. After that, you put your um, your one block guard facing up, and this one block guard needs to be relatively strong. Uh, Melantha won't be able to solo at this point. She'll basically um, be like a few attacks short, but Matori Maru, because she can self heal, will be able to do this. And also, she she has higher HP stat than um, than Melantha, so she can take more damage, and she also. Um, you know, is able to get to E2. So I, I currently have her at E2 level 20, which is just enough to take them down using her skill. I think if I raised her to 30, I will be able to kill them before without using using her skill. And the, the tricky part over here is um, you have to drop your next unit while clicking her and using her skill. So you'll need to click relatively fast. That's the, uh, that's the main issue. But if you're on Nox, you can actually bind a like a shortcut key on your keyboard to click this area and a shortcut key to click the uh, the skill afterwards so you don't you don't mess up. You don't accidentally misclick. The probably the simpler way would would have been to raise her to level 30 so she would kill this guy without needing to use her skill. Then you can retreat her and, you know, um, things would be much easier. So over here, the, the third step is I'm going to catch him with Gummy. Um, this can also be... My Gummy is not max potential. You can see it's 17. Oh, wait, no. My Gummy is max potential. I think. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but even if she's not, like, you see I have leftover deployment costs, so it's, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. And then I use her skill right after, and then I do do the last attack to finish him off, and then I retreat her, which will give me enough points to um, deploy my, my sniper. So over here I'm waiting for him to um, launch, because I'm waiting for him to launch an attack, because these casters hit two enemies at once. So if I, if I put Meteor down before, Meteor's gonna take an extra hit. So now he's gonna attack, start attacking both. And then Gummy will actually be able to sustain them. She won't be able to su sustain them infinitely, but she'll be able to sustain them for a little little while, which will buy me enough time to put down my AoE healer perfumer to start healing everybody up. And then at this point, um, your run is pretty stable because you have two healers healing these three people, so there's there's not going to be any problems. But there, there actually is like a bit of a DPS issue. You see the units stacking up and the fourth one is coming. So you'll need to start deploying some damage dealers uh, very, very soon. So I'm putting down Shaw to do some damage right before the fourth one gets here. And this way, Gummy's only blocking three at a time. And then over here, I, um, I use a Vanguard. Um, th this Vanguard will also have to be E2, mainly to have enough deployment points later, because I, I can't be doing this map without a Vanguard. I'll need to have um, a lot of deployment points, especially if I'm like um, deploying units and then redeploying them over and over. So because of that, I am putting down Scavenger. My fingers actually slipped. I was supposed to put her down immediately the moment that um, I can. And then 
Now, normally Scavenger won't be able to take take this guy, but with Perfumer healing, um, Scavenger will have no problem. I don't think any 3-star Vanguard will be able to do this, mainly because their attack stat isn't high enough, and this caster has 300 armor. So, like, Fang won't be able to do enough damage to, to her. So it has to be a 4-star or above. And then I, I deploy Vigna to do some damage to him. And then as soon as um, Matoi Maru is one, my one block guard is ready again, um, I put her down and basically do the same way as before. Just like the begin very beginning of the stage. If she was a few levels higher, she probably would have killed this guy before needing to use her heal, but it's fine. We just take her out. And at this point, there's actually only one um, little detail. I'm actually waiting for her her um, deployment or for her skill to, to give me some deployment points. And then I'm going to retreat her and switch her out for a tank. Because there's going to be a lot of units coming from here later on. So I basically, this lane, I'm just having Frost Leaf serve as damage dealer and a tank in front. And then right now, I'm just waiting for Vigna. Alright, once Vigna is ready, I immediately deploy her to start doing some damage to this guy. Now these casters are going to be spawning here, so basically um, Vigna can only poke him three times, which will do a little bit of damage to him, which will allow you to use um, use your, your one block guard to finish him off later. Actually that step wasn't really necessary but I think it helps because you'll have Vigna ready at the end anyways and she also refund, refunds 100% of her deployment cost so it doesn't really matter. It's actually better that you do it because then you can finish this guy faster and then retreat your one block guard and you know if there was an emergency at the very very end you could potentially still have that one block guard ready. So now this is the end of the stage. There's these two um, butcher dudes. They actually do quite a quite a bit of damage and you don't want um, your gummy, your healing tank to be tanking both of them at once. So I actually have a little trick here. This is like the last last little detail of this stage. And over here I'm just popping everybody's cooldown because it's basically the end of the stage. There's no point saving it. Although I don't, I, I highly doubt that Matterhorn actually needed to use his, his skill. Now I'm waiting for this Butcher to basically step to the block below, basically in between the two blocks, and then catch him here with Scavenger. And then here I pop Perfumer's skill to keep Scavenger up. Um, basically a lot of AoE healers will have active skills that uh, make him a little bit stronger. And here I was debating if the bot side needed more help or if the top side needed more help. And I saw that this Butcher guy was dying so I, I decided to use Vigna to help the top side. Now, the reason why I caught this guy over here is because he's basically um, in between the two slots, meaning that Vigna over here is able to hit him. Scavenger is also able to block him while, um, while Shaw and Meteor are, is able to hit him like this. And then basically he's in a in a spot where he's able to get hit by four units and also be blocked by one. So I, I catch him in between two tiles. And then at this point, there's only two of these, um, you know, Naruto runners. You just gotta finish them off. And one on the top side as well. They'll probably die at around the same time. And that's basically it. Now one little detail I forgot to mention is that um, the reason I'm using Shaw over here is because Shaw can basically serve the purpose of an AoE guard. She can hit all blocked units. So when Gummy's blocking all of them, Shaw is actually able to do damage to all the units that Gummy's blocking. And she also has like a little, um, her push, her first skill, her push, actually increases her attack a little bit. So every few seconds she actually gets a gets an increased attack, which helps with the um, the damage here on this tile. But that's basically it. That's 5-3 um, challenge mode without borrowing any support units and using only 4 stars. 
Anyways, if you have any questions, um, be sure to leave them below. I'll make more guides in the future, so be sure to subscribe for them. And if you haven't check, checked out my video of all the 5-3 challenge modes, um, be sure to take a look because I basically cleared through all of chapter five on this account that only uses um, four star and three star units. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.